I'm Kenny. I'm president of Queens College, and I'm delighted to see you here. Everyone owes something to the new Armstrong. Something. Like, I'm gonna be the man. I could do that before I learned to play the scale on trumpet. I, I was very, uh, very close to Louis Armstrong. He's funny too, man. <laughs> one time, one time uh, I went to see Louis Armstrong in Atlantic City. He was playing at the, the uh, boardwalk. And I went into his dressing room, and Pops was in there with a handkerchief uh, around his head. And, and he was in shorts. So I, I saw his legs. Yeah, I saw his legs in the morning, so I said, hey, what is that, what, what is that uh, band around your legs for? He said, well, you know, I got very close bands. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'd like to introduce someone who knew Satchmo very well. Arvel Shaw, the great bassist, performed with Satchmo for 25 years or more, and his band now is the Louis Armstrong Legacy. Arvel? Thank you. Thank you very much. It is indeed an honor. I was just speaking to Marty Napoleon a few minutes ago, saying that when we were running around the road doing these one nighters in the bus, did you think that you were working and standing side by side and sleeping and being like a family member with a man this great? Marty said no, and neither did Louis think that he was this great. <laughs> in fact, he never thought about it at all. And no matter what country, or West, Western Europe, or the, the communist country, or the so-called third world, whatever uh, part of the world we played in, no matter how sophisticated the audience, or how so-called primitive the audience was, they reacted the same way, the same things, to Louis. I think what they recognized around the world was his sincerity and his honesty. And the main thing they recognized was when he walked on stage, he gave out love. God bless you, Pops, and this makes me very happy. He deserved every bit of this. Thank you.
Life was there for me, and I accepted it. And life, whatever came out, has been beautiful to me, and I love everybody. Turn. One of New York's favorites is honored at Queens College. Don Williams on Louis Armstrong. Satchmo. Next. Thank you. Well, you'd be hard pressed to find an American who wasn't familiar with Louis Satchmo Armstrong. It is so easy to picture him working up a sweat, wailing on that horn, or to recall that gravel in his voice. Armstrong already has a place in our hearts and history. But now he has an honored place at Queens College, and Don Williams tells us about it. Louis Armstrong, Satchmo, Pops. Names given a man whose life and music forever changed the world. Everyone owes something to Louis Armstrong. Something. Like, I'm gonna be the man. Today at Queens College, they dedicated the archives of Louis Armstrong. They were things taken from his home in Queens, things in desperate need of preservation, a collection of music, instruments, 8,000 photographs, and letters he wrote to the famous, and some to the simple folks he loved so much. I think what they recognized around the world was his sincerity and his honesty. And the main thing they recognized was when he walked on stage, he gave out love. God bless you, Pops. In the audience, a who's who of jazz. Honey Coles, Dizzy Gillespie, Big Nick Nicholas, and Wynton Marsalis. Men who played with the legend and those who carry on his legacy. I think Pops is right now. He has the grandstand seat and he's just loving it to pieces. Louis Armstrong once wrote, Life has been beautiful to me, and I love everybody. And as six trumpets blew a tribute, it was good to know that generations will share the man, his music, his humanity. Name is for heaven, save my love. Oh, baby, did this end well, they say it's going to take at least two to three years to catalog and make insurance copies of all the music, but right now at Rosenthal Hall on the Queens College campus, you can enjoy the life and times of Louis Armstrong. What a nice thing. What I good think thing. that probably he was one of the most popular musicians among his peers uh, oh, exactly. than many we can think of. He was uh, special in our family because my dad was on the road with him when I was wonderful born. Wonderful life. You know? Wonderful yeah. life. I tell you, I just had a thrill listening to him play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was wonderful. I don't think anybody didn't. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doug. Right. Well, you won't have to uh, wait much longer or go very far to see some very personal prized possessions of jazz great Louis Armstrong. Some of Satchmo's things are going on display in Queens, and as Channel 2's Vic Miles discovered today, they provide a unique glimpse into a man who lived for his music. An icon of jazz, an innovator, Unforgettable personality and ambassador of goodwill. It would be terrible to lose the legacy of Louis Armstrong. Now the chances are excellent that a lot of what Louis willed to us will be preserved right here in his home borough of Queens in an archive at Queens College. We're very pleased to have with us to celebrate this occasion so many people who care about Louis. The archive is fondly titled Pop's Things. It'll contain a lot of his correspondence, including original manuscripts of personal letters, tape recordings some never heard publicly, and hundreds of photographs. We are honoring probably the greatest influence on jazz that ever was, and that's Mr. Louis Armstrong. Materials in the archive date back to 1926. His early life and music, his bands, his travels, his unmistakable voice, and the charm he carried from country to country as an ambassador of goodwill. $80,000 in grants will get the archive operational and help keep that particular thing that Louis Armstrong did going. He's brought so much love and laughter and humanness 
that the man lives on and on and on and on. The importance of these items being kept in here is their preservation. The temperature and humidity, everything's controlled so they'll last a long, long time. The only thing we're missing is the personage himself. Everyone owes something to Louis Armstrong. Something. Right. I'm confessing and I love you. I'm going tell her. For generations to come, it'll be nice to be able to walk through here and get the feel that Louis Armstrong left to us. As Diz said, quote, know him, know me. At Queens College, Vic Miles, Channel 2 News. Oh, oh boy. What a great imitation Satire. Dizzy did. Oh, he's that great. great. <clears throat> we'll be right back with an update on the story. You know, you mentioned New Orleans, Chicago, uh, Memphis. All kinds of music comes to mind. What about Queens? One of the world's most celebrated jazz stars lived there, and now he's being honored there. Steve Powers reports. From the public's point of view, Louis Armstrong was a popular, gravel-voiced, handkerchief-carrying, entertaining trumpet player, always on hand to pick up a sagging movie with his virtuoso performance. Today, 20 years after his death, he got some of the recognition and honor due him as a jazz great, as the Louis Armstrong Archive was dedicated at Queens College, not too far from where he lived. We have five of his trumpets. We have hundreds of pages of autobiographical writings. We have 500 reel-to-reel -reel tapes, many of which are completely original and rare. There are over 1,200 commercial recordings. I have 72 boxes full of Louis stuff, and I'm just starting to go through it. Now, while the public saw the pop side of Pops, jazz musicians were studying his music, learning his licks to incorporate in their playing. Well, I'm a musician, and Louis Armstrong is the greatest American musician. Well, if it had been, no, if it had been Louis Armstrong, it wouldn't have been no bebop. Because it's a line. Big influence, because I went to Louis Armstrong Middle School, and I listened to practically every song he has, he has performed, but... But I'm learning them now, so. Uh -huh. So it's going to be part of your history. Oh, yes, definitely. The Louis Armstrong Archive at Queens College is not open to the public yet, but they hope to make it available soon to tell the real story of a jazz great who was at the forefront of black awareness and acceptance. He was doing things way before the sit-ins in the South and those things. He was doing that back in the 30s. He had the most recognizable voice of anyone. You could hear Louis say, hey, Pops. And millions of people knew that it was Louis Armstrong. In Queens, Steve Powers, Fox 5 News.